Wow, this came out of nowhere, huh? Netflix, you gotta get better about what you decide to hype, or at least, like, tell people is coming out. I mean, I like a surprise as much as the next person, but this was way better than, like, Bird Box. Looks like it probably cost you less, too. Okay, so Dan Gilroy is one of those Hollywood side player guys who's always had a bunch of seemingly random solid credits, mainly as screenwriter and producer, for a couple decades and then one day suddenly breaks out with a major work that feels like some fresh new edgy kid that just showed up and everyone goes, whoa, who's the new fresh edgy kid who just showed up? But then it turns out he's almost 60, you've seen him around the bunch, he's been married to Rene Russo for like 30 years and you're like, well, consider my assumptions checked. Now for Gilroy, that late blooming breakout was his writer-director of an ultra-creepy 2014 psychological thriller called Nightcrawler, followed by the tepidly received Roman J. Israel Esquire in 2017. Whether in reaction or by happenstance, Velvet Buzzsaw reunites him with Nightcrawler stars Jake Gyllenhaal and Rene Russo and returns into that earlier film's dark side of Los Angeles setting, this time with a more extreme jump into both outright horror and pointed observational satire. Set in and around the world of high-end contemporary LA art scene, the film features Gyllenhaal as a pretentious, highly influential art critic, Russo as a former punk music musician turned ruthless big money art dealer, Zoe Ashton as her ambitious assistant, Tony Collette as an ice queen private buyer, Tom Sturridge as an obnoxious gallery owner, John Malkovich as a burned out has-been artist on the downswing, and David Diggs as a street artist about to go big time. They're all thoroughly awful, unlikable, preening, snobby, self-important, insufferable people, and as in Nightcrawler, Gilroy evidences a profound talent for capturing a realistic feeling essence of exactly these sorts of personalities in a way that's uncomfortably authentic enough to avoid out right caricature, but elevated just enough to still be funny when they need to be. In the story proper, Ashton's put-upon assistant character chances on a vast cachet of disturbing yet compelling paintings in the apartment of a mysterious elderly neighbor who died under suspicious circumstances and, sensing an opportunity, enters into an arrangement either involving or abetted by all the other main characters in one way or another to exhibit and or sell the mystery artist's mystery art for what would seem to be a major potential profit, but no sooner have they embarked on this venture, then do strange occurrences and bizarre accidents begin cropping up in the lives of anyone who's become involved in these strange paintings, nightmares, visions, bad luck, strained relationships, nervous breakdowns, and it gets worse as Gyllenhaal's critical instincts lead him to investigate the past of the unknown artist himself, uncovering sketchy references to childhood trauma, psychiatric institutions, government experiments, pretty much everything you don't want to find out in a situation like this. And that's before people start to die under interesting circumstances. To say more would give away the game, but, well, use your imagination. Or maybe don't. That's kind of the second layer of fun hiding within what's already a cleverly mounted small-scale genre exercise. Eventually you start to realize that Velvet Buzzsaw is reveling in the joys of hiding its intentions in plain sight, and the more you go peeking around the margins for some semblance of an esoteric twist or genre-elevating deconstructionist angle, the more you're going to find that the simplest version of what seems to be going on is in fact exactly what's going on, right down to the mechanism by which a haunted painting might become haunted or how that concept might manifest itself in a scary movie, which of course appears to be the whole gag. Velvet Buzzsaw is indeed a classically structured you shouldn't have opened the scary box campfire story that just happens to be set among and exclusively star exactly the sort of pretentious windbag characters whose very state of being is looking too hard at simple obvious things like a you shouldn't have opened the scary box campfire story and trying to overthink them in order to flex their supposed sophistication and assuage their insecurities. In effect, Gilroy is himself engaging in the same puckish mind game as the malevolent paintings in the film itself. Ha! All these high-end actors' actors doing very acutely observed and genuine portrayals of the smart artistic people had you thinking this was heading for some highbrow shit, but instead I got you to watch what's basically an above-average Tales from the Crypt. Gotcha. But regardless of how much of Velvet Buzzsaw is metatextual pranking and how much is simply, hey, I got this great idea for a horror movie and my Rolodex has a bunch of really good actors in it, what eventually does end up elevating the exercise is that Gilroy has a really good eye and efficient workmanlike sense of pacing, and the actors are doing a really good job playing what could easily have been a collection of one-dimensional parody characters completely straight, even when things get really strange in Act 3. Especially Gyllenhaal, who's been known to occasionally overcommit to material like this, but here turns in a terrific odd yet unnerving rendering of a guy who more than any of the other characters has built a whole existence for himself around being sealed in a bubble of irony, pretense, and detachment that gets shattered almost immediately on first contact with the even vaguest hint of a force that he can't deconstruct his way out of.
It's honestly one of the best portraits of man who looks into the abyss completely unprepared for something to look back at him I've ever really seen, and it really makes the film. In any case, three stars, solid stuff. I had a lot of fun with this.